Cemetery Gates podcast featuring Xander Kane and Android Virus. Cemetery Gates Podcast. I am Mr. Android Virus, joined by my illustrious co-host, Mr. Xander Kane. How you doing, sir? Hey, you know, it's February. We made it. We made it. it it's February 1st. I know. Right? Damn. Some, did, some didn't think we'd get here. We got here. I knew we would. Yeah. We've survived. They're going to survive past us. They survived before us. <laughs> We will be fine. I'm sitting, this is on true. A, I'm sitting on a green lawn chair in my closet. Nothing for, but nothing but the best for us. Expe- <laughs> expensive taste, sir. No, oh, we don't hold back the budget on Studio A. No, no, we don't. Uh, with our golden voices. <laughs> yeah. We got golden equipment to match our golden voices. That's right. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, man. So it's been it's been a hot what, couple weeks? Couple weeks? Uh, yeah, a couple weeks for sure. I, I don't know. I lost track. I don't know. I, I I lose track, sir. But uh yeah, man. Uh we got a fun show up for you guys uh this week and uh we decided to do something more topical. Um, yeah. Which every now and again we do that when we want, you know. Really Follow the keep, rules. <laughs> keep, them guess, keep them guessing, sir. That's right. Ah, keep them guessing. So, um, what, what have you been watching? Oh, man. Uh, let's see. I, what did I talk about last time? We talked about Cobra Kai, which I finished that up. Um, but we already talked about that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But uh, other stuff that I've watched is I watched a documentary. I've been like a documentary kick. Mm-hmm. Um, the last few days, and I watched the Mothman Legacy. Mm-hmm. I watched that one too. Yeah, so you know, it's always cool for me to go look at that stuff because I was born and, and raised in West Virginia, so it's. No, you weren't. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, so it's always cool to see the mountains and all that stuff and hear all the lore again. You know that you, that you hear as a kid. So my boss, cool. my boss is from West Virginia. Yeah, it was entertaining enough. I was hoping it was going to be a little better, but it was yeah. all right. It was just my, okay. My boss is from West Virginia, so I've learned some West Virginia na- vernacular. There you go. Holler. Uh, H- Hill Jacks. <laughs> I don't know what the... And I finally had to say, Sh- Shane, brother, what, what's a Hill Jack? <laughs> oh, let me tell you, man. Da, 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 da. I'm just like, oh, Jesus. Okay. Sorry, I asked. Goddamn Hill Jacks out there think they're going to put it together that fast. They don't know what the hell they're doing. Da, da, da. And I'm just like, oh... Okay. <laughs> All right. That's a hill jack. So uh, and then I I caught the uh, uh, Tales of the Uncanny that Severin released and it's a documentary about uh, horror movie anthologies. Cool. Which was really cool. And then the disc has a short film from 1919 that's totally silent that was thought to be lost until a few years ago. So that's on the disc as a special feature. And then they have a uh, uh, extraordinary tales from like 1944. It's like a Belgian uh, horror anthology on the disc as well. So that was pretty rad. Yeah. I highly recommend that if you like um, if you like documentaries in general, uh, it's pretty damn rad. And to get the bonuses of the kind of lost and forgotten anthology ones are pretty cool. So nice feature. Great set. Right. I think it's like 20 bucks. Well worth nice. the price of admission. I uh, I watched uh, the, night, uh, the Night Stalker. Uh, the hunt for a serial killer on on Netflix. Yeah, did you get um, all butt hurt too? No, why? <laughs> well, these people are like getting mad about it because like they showed too much. I'm like, this is no fucking different than listening to a podcast describe it in great detail. 
Well, um, it's just something different to see it. I'm like, the subject matter is a subject matter. Who cares? They show, I guess they show some crime scene photos. Yeah, it's but a bit it's much. I'm like, what? but but everything's blur. Everything's blurred out. You know yeah, what I mean? I like, I haven't seen it yet. That's just what the complaints are that they went too far and showed too much with the oh, like no, crime I, scene stuff. And I was like, what? I, maybe I'm broken, but or maybe <laughs> I maybe I've seen too much. I've seen too. I was getting ready to do a Running Man quote, but uh. You know, <laughs> I've seen too much. All I've seen is a bunch of low foreheads who think they could change the world with dreams and talk. <laughs> Sorry, that's my running man. Didn't uh, expect that quote for today. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> do me a break. Go do me a favor. If you're not going to act, shut up. You know, that's, that's my running man quote. But um, maybe I have seen too much. I don't know, like in you know, true, real true crime stuff. But I thought it was very... For what it was, they didn't use reenactments. They used some small reenactments, actually, but they did show some crime scene stuff. But not, but everything was blurred out, like any, yeah. any of the the damage and the wounds. You know what I mean? That he did. But I mean, yeah, they showed like bodies laying down and stuff. But I didn't think it was that bad. What yeah. I did like about it though was, it didn't glorify him. It what it did was is it glorified the families and the detectives trying to catch him, and. That's what I liked about it because it really focused on the them, the effects it had on them, and what what it was taken to, to to catch him. And they barely skimmed over his background, like I think in the fourth episode for like two or three minutes, which which is you know more than what he deserved, you know. Right. Um, so I I, I like that. We really like that. We powered through that one, and then I I ended up uh, purchasing a Discovery Plus. Hey, we did too. How about that? Uh, what do you know? That's where you watch the Mothman, huh? <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know, actually. You do? I, I watched that on Tubi, I believe. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's on there. So, and then they had a, another really good um, uh, documentary on there. It was fucking long. It was like four hours, but it was in two parts. And it was called The uh, Clown and the Candy Man. And uh, that was about um John Wayne Gacy and uh Dean Coral who is kind of an un unheard of serial killer um it just doesn't get as much quote unquote recognition as as a lot of the rest of them but uh man he he he, he John Wayne Gacy beat his record of killing you know teen, young teenage boys like just by a hair but pretty much kind of like the same same MO and some, some, you know, so they kind of take the the point of view that John Wayne Gacy probably did copy some of his stuff, right? Um, but it, you know, Dean Coral, the difference between him and John Wayne Gacy, Dean Coral was in in Texas, and he had a couple of dudes working with him, you know. So, uh, but they and they were younger kids that he kind of manipulated that were finding other kids for him, you know, and they would torture him and rape him and kill him and bury him and do all that crazy shit, but these kid, one of the one of the kids turned on him and shot him dead uh, so he got what he deserved you know and ultimately yeah. but uh that was in the early 70s but they kind of make the correlation of like this underground secret society that i would i would say like a secret society in the 70s. <laughs> no 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 not at all um uh, more more tangible um okay. basically fucking pedos pedophiles Jesus. Yeah, it, and and th- them two guys were connected in a weird way, and along with clergymen and politicians and you name it, man. You know, like and they had like a whole card system that disappeared when it got into. But there was some pictures of the cards that this. So this guy was. I don't want to get into it and give too much, but they had the, they had a whole card system, index card system of. All this guy, the guy, this guy would find young boys to uh, for these pedophiles, and he had a whole index card system of all these like well-to-do people that that purchased them, um, and you know foster care was involved. It was a pretty, but Dean Coral and John Wayne Gacy were kind of in the same little weird pedophile shit, man. It's weird, dude. You should watch it. It's scary. It is weird. It's, it's like before the internet. This is how they met, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's really scary, man. I mean, it's pretty, I mean, it's, yeah. I mean, for people not to think that there isn't something like that, and this is not like some 
crazy satanic panic thing, you know, but it right. really it really did happen, you know? It's tangible. <laughs> Unlike the debunked satan- satanic panic stuff of the six the of the of the of the eighties, you know. Yeah. I, I find those things hilarious, you know. Oh yeah. But, yeah, they're so funny. Um yeah, so that and what else did we watch? Oh, I watched Porky's yesterday. I rewatched that like a month or two ago. Did you? So <laughs> yeah. the first time in I swear to God, like thirty one years probably. Yeah. Thirty years. I watched it when I was like fourteen and I used to watch it all the time. Naturally. <laughs> but it's not as risque as I remember. Maybe I'm just more damaged. I don't know. Uh, no, I thought the same thing too. I was like, it's not as like, um, yeah, just not as taboo as I thought it was when I was younger. But it was when we were younger. <laughs> like, oh, I saw some boobs. All excited. It's still. I still think it's funny. Oh yeah, it's great. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. we, cool. I was, I was a little leery because my wife's like, I was, like, I don't know if this is gonna hold up. She's like, what do you mean? I was like, I, we'll see how well it's aged. I mean, I haven't seen it since I was 14. You know, my humor's yeah. changed a little bit. And she says, you're going to love it. You, you're going to, and, and I really loved it. You know what I liked about it, man? Obviously, they were not shy of ta- tackling racial issues in that at all. Oh, yeah, no, they do. Um, with the, uh, yes, I know what you're talking about. I understand. Yeah. yeah they, they, I mean, and it wasn't like I'm saying it was it was not a racist movie, but what I'm saying is like they were tackling racial issues and and you know you kind of have the dudes because it's in the 50s in Florida, and then you kind of have the guys like man, come on, dude, you know like yeah their, their friends setting them straight. Look, I know you're a redneck, but come on, dude, you know yeah like, <laughs> yeah he's like come on, Let's kick it down a notch. Yeah yeah. All right yeah. Ahead. So I think the the cool the funniest thing in that movie was like. The, the Jewish kid, yeah, and he, he he's all he's off. You're gonna if you're gonna insult me, insult me right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he tries. Yeah, he tries to call him off. Whatever. He yeah, says it's completely wrong. Yeah, it's pretty funny. And they kind of let him go along. Yeah, it's, it, I I I rather enjoyed it actually. Is so. is the first one where they do the tallywhacker lineup? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. What do you suggest I line them all up and show them your the tallywhackers? <laughs> it's got a mole on it. <laughs> so yeah, man, that was a that was a good one. Um, and then we did an Android Vision last week, and we revisited a movie that I did on the f- our very first episode of our Halloween or of our yeah thirty one days of Halloween. My very first movie, The Equinox. Yeah, yeah. So, got to rewatch that, and uh, I still like it, man. It's really cool, but I got to tell you, man, the best thing I liked about it was everybody that was in the chat room watching Android Vision with us, how they were completely blown away because there's a there's a segment in the movie and they're like, wait, the Evil Dead isn't original. Like there <laughs> there's there are some really crushed people, man. Yeah. Yeah, they're just <laughs> like it's it's not original. I was like, this whole scene is basically taken off the Evil Dead, and I'm like. Yeah. I told you, man. <laughs> I told you. And then, and then Phantasm, too. You know, like they go to another dimension in a red world with druids. It's like, yeah. Hmm. But anyways, you know, we, you know, I think horrors like that, you know, you kind of pick up where other people live off, leave off, try to do it better. Right. It's like guitar playing. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. You emulate who does it good and try to do it better. So... All right, man. So we didn't do any shorts this week or or uh, second chances. We'll get back to that next time. Yeah. Uh, which is cool. We don't have to do it every time. Yeah. But um, for sure. Yeah. So we picked we picked a couple of newer movies from 2019 and 2020, and uh, I guess we'll go with my pick first since I shot it to you. All right. Um, which is going to be. Um, well, it was actually released January 22nd, 2021, but obviously produced in 2020. But uh, it is going to be Psycho Goreman. Uh, let's go ahead and listen to the trailer, and we'll be right back after this. Many moons ago, a nameless evil was imprisoned in a place far beyond reach. Hurry up! 
If he were ever to be released, it would spell certain doom for all existence. Is that fear I smell? Your planet will be torn to pieces, and I will Mimi, your look. angry screams as I rip. Is this yours? Oh. Be? Oh my god. The gem of Paraxidike. Whoever wields it is able to command me. Go over there. <sighs> and wait for us to come back in the morning. You will suffer an eternity for this. Bye! Mom, Dad, I want you to meet Psycho Gorman. Or PG for short. I will bathe in your blood. Don't worry. Be worried. Slow down! He's gonna kill everybody. Not unless I tell him to. What did you three maniacs get up to? Um, this is getting a little weird. This sick game must come to an end. She will enslave the galaxy into endless servitude. Kill him! Cool. The ultimate evil has awoken. There's a new god in town, and his name? Psycho Gorman. It was nice meeting you. It would be nicer if you were dead. All right, bye. All right, man. Psycho Goreman. You guys listen to the trailer. And basically, um, it's about uh, intergalactic assassins who converge in a small town after two siblings unwittingly resurrect an ancient e alien overlord. Uh, that's kind of it in a nutshell. Um, but the movie is uh, directed by uh, Stephen Kazansky. Sure. Is, yeah, Stephen Sounds Kazansky. Right. He directed the he directed The Void. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. which yeah. I liked a lot actually. Yes, he he directed the Void, and uh, so this is his second directorial debut, which is cool. It's it's a nice foray. <laughs> I feel like it's kind of like a little um, a little homage to Power Rangers. Kaiju, oh yeah, fucking sure. violent like yeah, meat. and like it also gives off like the you know like to me it was like very Star Trekky. When they're gathered around like the council at the at the table with the assassins, it feels very like you know feels very inspired by that that to me anyways, yeah. which is cool. Yeah, um, it's fun, man. It's it's a Canadian movie. Uh, you know, we just got to say that for the firecracker, uh, Miss Heather Powell, <laughs> so, so, so she can be proud, and and our buddy Greg Mo, Greg Mo That's Roberts. Right. Yeah. So, um, but it was directed and and, and directed by Stephen. Kazansky and and uh yeah so basically they they little kids are kind of like bore a couple of little just a couple of little bored kids in Canada they don't really say if it's during COVID time but they're obviously best friends this, these siblings uh I don't know if they're twins or not but they seem very close in age yeah I, don't uh, think I say they're twins yeah but um but uh, essentially. You know, they're, they, they, they do a, a homemade game called Crazy Ball. Yeah. And <laughs> it's like a weird dodgeball meets Gaga Ball meets Lord knows what else. It's weird. Right, right. And the you little have no sister, idea what's going on. You're like, okay. Yeah, they're covered in mud. But the little sister's a little domineering little shit. <laughs> um, my wife watched it with me. She goes, if this little girl doesn't die in this movie. And I'm like, I was like, okay, I said, the tagline, the tagline is little girl, big psycho. So I'm just saying it's kind of a play on words, you know, but um, yeah, she's kind of a little shit, but they find this, they find this uh, like glowing gem in the ground. They like dig a hole in the ground and um, they basically encounter the monster and he goes, uh, he call, calls himself the Archduke of Nightmares. <laughs> yeah. And he was basically a an alien warrior, evil fucking guy imprisoned on Earth uh, after attempting to destroy the galaxy. And uh, he he's gonna kill the kids, but uh, they find out that he has the gem. They they have the gem, which allows them to like control him. But um, 
there's a pretty cool scene where he encounters a couple of tough guys in a in a, in a factory. Yeah. And uh, he 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 just fucking decimates them in a very violent way. Yeah. There's no definitely no lack of gore in this. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's everywhere. The deaths are really great from uh, Psycho Gorman, and who set who sounds like fucking Optimus Prime. Yeah. <laughs> when he talks, <laughs> which is kind of cool. Yeah. He he. Uh, he tells some guy, he's like, please don't, the guy goes, please don't kill me. He goes, fine, you'll suffer for eternity. And the <laughs> yes. guy's just sitting there with his, like, skin pull, slowly peeling off and his eyes rolling in the back of his head over and over and over and over. <laughs> it's like, oh, my God. So we know what we're getting into with this. But um, but the kids kind of, like, are just unafraid. Well, at least the little sister is. Yeah, she's but, quite fearless throughout the whole movie. She's like, nah, this is my, I run this show. This is, I do what I want. Right, and and, yeah. and and the brother's a little bit more timid and not really really willing to speak up. Seems like he got some issues with confrontation. Just like okay, okay, goes along with it, but very reluctantly. Um, but uh, <laughs> they introduce him to the parents, and they have some like little funny backstories with the parents, which is real. The, the dad's hilariously um, delayed comedy. Yeah, it it's is. It's quite funny, or delayed deliveries, but it's really funny. Well, the dad's the dad's played by um, uh, what's his name, Adam Brooks, and he he's been in a couple of things that we've seen before. Um, he's like been like Manborg, Father's Day. He's he's been in quite a bit of stuff. He's a funny actor, but um, he's like a lazy. I don't know. They're like they kind of don't say if he's. He's like, I was in, I was in uh, the Iraq War, and she, the mom's like, what? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> there's just some funny little one-liners in it. Um, but uh, so the parents kind of have a funny little relationship, like a little bit of a love-hate relationship. But they finally meet Psycho Goreman as well, and uh, they're kind of cool with it, I guess, as much as they can be. But the, one of the funny parts is, is, is they meet. Um, the, the little friend. The t- uh, oh, yeah. La, Lars, or what was his name? Yeah, Larson? Yeah. Alistair? Yeah. Alistair? Oh. Alistair, Alistair. Yeah. Alistair. Got and it. So, yeah, Mimi had a, had a crush on Alistair, and she's annoyed that, you know, her he wants to go play with the brother, and they want to do this. So she... She make she she summons... Uh, you know, she summons Psycho Goreman to make him a, a playmate, like a... Like a Make him the perfect friend, or and then so they turn him into a giant brain creature. Yeah, <laughs> it looks like someone like took a um, corned beef and just threw it on a tart. <laughs> it was so gross and fleshy. And his eyes, his like, eyes and his little tentacles, and he's like, "Oh, oh, come on, guys!" Like that's so sad, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just kind of, oh, he just kind of scoots around. He has to s- slide around like a fucking snail. It's pretty funny. But, um, yeah, so, like, you know, they're just kind of getting into their little shenanigans, little co- comedy relief, dressing them up like a cowboy, whatever else. Uh, and he just basically looks like a Power Rangers bad guy, you know, and and, and, and essentially. And then, um, you know, they encounter some cops. He turns one of the cops into his slave, which is really cool. And I felt like it was kind of a homage to uh, uh, um, which, what's that movie? Videodrome where, you know, James Wood's hand turns into the gun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the same that happens with this cop. So he's just, like, shooting indiscriminately, walking around like a zombie with, like, never-ending bullets. It's hilarious. <laughs> but, yeah, so this this council, that you get some backstory. Basically, Psycho Gorman, whatever his race was, they were basically slaves to this, I don't know, angelic light race. I don't know. And they had to build buildings for them, and they looked at you know big old temples, and they looked at them, you know, Psycho Gorman's race is lower than dirt, and they finally kind of rebelled and he became strong and fucking took out a whole bunch of them. Um, and you know, it's kind of like the, uh, the backstory of why he is the way he is because he's fighting this, like, I don't know, angelic race of the Templars they're called. Yeah. Um, and so they kind of meet in a little, you know, these little aliens, they meet in a round table and there's this lady, she's like an alien. And basically you guys got to think like the worst, not the worst, but the best, like, Power Rangers makeup you can. That's what these things have. It's not, like, that great, but I don't think it's supposed to be that great. No, it's really, like, 
so even when you have them all in the room, it's like they went really kind of cheap on the set to put more money into the costumes because the costumes are pretty intricate and really honestly quite rad and you're thinking like to come up with that many costumes like in that scene in particular because you got what seven or eight unique um yeah you know space creatures i don't know what the hell they are so yeah i mean uh, kudos to like the makeup and special effects department on this movie like they you know all the costuming and practical effects were great so I I told my wife I said um remember that show Face Off? Yeah. Oh, there we go again. Oh, sorry. Uh your 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 headset was messing up a little bit. But um that show Face Off, it, it was kind of like I felt like that they got like students and they're like create your best <laughs> It was a challenge for that yeah. episode. Yeah. Yeah, create your best uh alien for this. This is the picture. Um, so that, that was pretty cool, man. Um, you're getting a little scratchy again, dude. Yeah. I don't know what's causing it. There we go. Can you hear me? I can hear you. All right, cool. We'll roll this. Okay. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So yeah, I feel like that they kind of like did the whole face off, like you know, let's just get a bunch of cool freaking FX students in here and let's give them a picture and you know, I mean, I don't know if that's a trick. Have, but have it, them do their thing. <laughs> yeah, but that's what it felt like, man. And they had some really cool characters. I don't want to go into all the characters, but it's like a who's who of just bad guys with funny little backstories, basically told <laughs> yeah. with t- two lines, you know. Oh, I should have known it was you. And just really cool makeup and really cool fights, really cool gore. Don't want to give a whole lot away between the fight that they have on Earth. But Psycho Man, Gore Man gets hurt. And, you know, he's 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 throughout the movie, he's promised to kill the girl and her family. And he needs the the jewel to reheal, reheal himself. But, uh, you know, they're very reluctant to give it to him. But they are taking care of him. Yeah. And then uh, one of the 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 templar uh the the main chick uh her name is pandora she comes down to earth to the family because she finds psycho gorman the family they staying with and she turns her her uh, her mom into like kind of like her muse or something right like a like another little angel character yeah like, yeah she turns her into like basically a follower which she looks more like um <laughs> she looks more like or acts more like the daddy and space balls like her movements are very like <laughs> meh yeah kind of eh, computer eh, and unstable eh. yeah she's, she's a bit aloof but yeah, it plays she's... it plays for a great um kind of comedy between the husband and the wife later <laughs> when she's like the the uh whatever the hell the, the tempest yeah the t- yeah she's like uh you're lazy. I think I'm gonna dump you. Like all that fun stuff. <laughs> but um, yeah. So it's it's pretty cool. But they kind of realize, like, you know, I mean, they kind of realize that, you know, the the Pandora, the the angel like creature who wants to kill Psycho Gorman, will do. She, she, they don't care about humans. You know, they're gonna do. They they'll fuck humans up too. They just want to kill Psycho Gorman. Whereas the humans have been giving Psycho Gorman like, you know, what it what it's like to be loved and what it's like to have a family and to be taken care of and, you know, giving him all these things, you know, which he does not deserve. And, right. <laughs> but, it, you know, but, you know, kind of towards the end, you know, when the big fight happens, it's like, wow, you know, I, I that's, this is love. This is, you know, this is nice. This is nice. You know, I won't kill you guys. And so it does this whole flip flop and, which is cool, you know, it's like the, the up is down, black is white type of thing where it's like, you know, the people who you think are supposed to be the most evil assholes in the universe end up being the ones who are kind of fighting for something, whereas the other ones just, you know, are pushing their agenda. So I saw I saw that part in it, which was really cool, man. Yeah, um, for sure. Fun music, fun. Um, definitely. Synth, yeah, synth power stuff. synthy stuff. Yeah. 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 That little girl is a hell of an actress. Um, I will say, uh, what's her name? I got, I'm going to get her name cause I don't want to not mention her, but she'll definitely have a, a, unless she decides to give up Hollywood, she definitely has a future in the genre. Uh, oh, for sure. Yeah. N- Nita Josie Hannah, um, hell of a little actress. Um, I will say cause she is completely hateable. Yeah. I mean, I really, <laughs> the, the movie, I mean, 
the movie kind of hinges on her character a good bit too. Mm-hmm. Like it's a good counterpart to Psycho Gorman. Like what better, you know, this big bad overlord and, the, and that's you know one of the most feared in all the universe <laughs> and basically being controlled by a you know 60 pound 10 year old or whatever 12 year old (laughs) (laughs) that's not even that wasn't scared from him for a second from the beginning like didn't even bat an eye at the whole thing (laughs) yeah yeah she she was uh she's a little shit (laughs) i could say that because i have kids (laughs) <laughs> and I have a granddaughter who I call. I was like, yeah, she's a little shit. I'm just kidding. But anyways, um, yeah, man. So I don't, I don't want to give too much away about this movie. Um, it, it is what it is. It's a very basic storyline, but it's fun. Um, you know, it, it really could be a children's movie without all the gore. Um, yeah. There's not a whole lot of cursing in it, to be honest uh, with you. There's Maybe a few, a, but not, not, it's not excessive. No, and there's obviously no nudity or overtly sexual themes or anything like that because it's it's got to put this kids in it you know it's it's yeah. kid driven the only thing that makes this movie rated r is because it's fucking gory as yeah. shit um yeah. which i really enjoyed about it hey we picked up gory movies this week sandra that's yes, our we did that's our that's our go-to brother um <laughs> we well not our go-to but that's 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 we usually pick something in common when our movies but um yeah psycho gore man um you know you can rent it on amazon prime and you can whatever streaming services you can i'm sure you can buy it on blu-ray wherever you can buy it you Just cannot buy it on blu-ray yet it's not out. whoa whoa i stand corrected i'll be looking for this at walmart uh oh. or best buy or wherever but i'm sure it'll come out soon because yeah. it seems to be a hit amongst oh, yeah, the yeah, uh, yeah. our genre right for amongst sure. our our homies and and the whole little horror industry right now it's hey i get it it's uh it's a rad ass movie it's the talk of the town, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm going to give this movie, an, a, don't lambast me, people, a three and a half out of five. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. Um, it, it didn't, I think it's just because of the hype around it, right? Yeah. Um, I was expecting something a little bit better, but I, I did enjoy it for what it was. I didn't hate it. Um. I don't know. Maybe I was just expecting a little bit more, you know, flying saucers and um, I don't know, maybe a little bit more explosions and just, and, you know, destruction. And but there was some cool stuff in it. Um, and that's probably based off of my expectations. But I'm going to give it about a three and a half to four. I'll call it a four. How about that? We'll do four. Okay. Out of five. Yeah, that's uh, four. Four was going to be my rating as well. And uh, it, uh, the, it definitely feels a little long toward the end. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like the last. um you know, kind of when you where you see where the story's going, you're like, all right, let's just have this already. <laughs> let's let's get to it. So it does does suffer a little bit at the end, and then you know, like what you said is sometimes it wasn't um, you know didn't deliver. But I felt that most times that it didn't deliver, that there was something that was like way above your expectation. You're like, holy shit, that was really cool. All right, so it seemed like it did. A lot of the negatives for me were often redeemed by an amazing scene and whatnot, and I just adored the music in it as well, so I think yeah. it's just super fun. It, it'll be a it'll be a classic. People will talk about it for a while. It's it's the good stuff. Yeah, it, it it is it is a it is a fun one for the you know for the most part. I thought it was and, and it's funny. It's it's a comedy. Um, yeah, it's a very lighthearted. Um, it's not a very heavy movie. Um, which is kind of both of our movies <laughs> this go yeah. around, <laughs> lighthearted and violent. Um, if we can put that all in the same freaking wheelhouse, but um, yeah, so not bad. I enjoyed it. Four out of five. Uh, like you said, it lagged a little bit, but it's a t- got that total Canadian feel, man. I love yeah. the total Canadian feel. And I it. will say, if you're not into it by the first ten minutes, you're just not going to be into it. I don't think yeah like it's just not gonna be your thing so just turn it off so like the first 10 minutes if you're into it then ride it out for sure yeah yeah so not bad um so guys go check it out uh we recommend it for sure um if you're into just monster creature features different stuff like that so um up next mr xander's pick um and um we'll go ahead and play the trailer for 2019's porno that's right you heard it right porno 
And that's not a porno movie. That's just the name of the movie. So we'll be right back. You guys hear that? The science of porn is well known. The human brain, when aroused by erotic images, dumps chemicals into the bloodstream, which send the viewer into full throttle, give me more mode. No, that's right, and we may think that we're just being curious, but that will turn into an obsession. listen to the trailer for mr xander kane's pick porno uh take it away sir yeah so this movie is from 2019 and directed by keola Rosella, who i have not much uh, information on that i don't i don't think i've seen any of their other work so i don't know if it's male or female can you see that aaron anywhere I'm did you see that anywhere I'm going to take a look. Uh, directed, like, Above the Sea, Two Sisters, Sugar, um, Beast in the Bed. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, there's quite quite a few movies. Um, yeah, a lot of a lot of awards for the for this for this act actor or this director. director. <laughs> I'm going to look to see. I'm going to look to see if Kilo Rosea is a a, a a guy or girl though. Yeah, I have no idea. I don't know if um, I don't know. I've never oh. heard anyone with that name before. So, because that could could uh could could um uh, it's a guy. Okay. <laughs> All right. I was just right. say that could that could that could put a different paint job on things. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. So the the movie itself takes place. Uh, this is really cool. I I love this uh, kind of idea for for the movie. And it's these kids live in this like super Christian town, and um, they all work at the movie theater, and mm-hmm. they find they find like an old reel of a movie, and they decide to watch it in the theater. And it's like in this weird basement from some homeless guy, like running in the theater and like breaking all the shit and screaming. And he like jumps through like a wooden a door that's covered up by wood and it like takes him down into this basement. And there's like all these old movie reels and stuff down there. And so they put the movie reel in the projector and it's like this weird porno. And it's like the kids are like, is it art? I don't know what it is. What is it? And of course, one of the straight edge kids gets mad and like shuts it off. But ultimately, that unleashes a uh, demon into the theater, and the demon goes around trying to like um, the way it traps them is to get them aroused and then kill them in some sort of super gory way. Yeah, it's 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 uh it's fun, man. <laughs> yeah, like within the first two seconds there's like a super hardcore sex scene like right at the very beginning that's what i should say it's like it's just really loud <laughs> like it's yeah like okay here we are loud and bouncy and sweaty yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i want i, want, I, I do want to i do want to preface a couple of things before we get too further I, I this movie was very personally like uh, watching it was nostalgic to me because the movie is placed in 1992 uh, in, right. the, in the movie, which I, I thought was great that they placed it in the 90s. Now, th- th- here's here's some other funny things, um, weird synchronicities. I my first job 
was in a movie theater in 1992. <laughs> and I specifically remember Encino Man and A League of Their Own uh, posters and, you know, watching those movies. Um, yeah. Not only that, this is this is going to be real. This is this is going to be really funny. Um in the movie porno, the projector is like, you know, he's older than the rest of them because they're all high school kids. He's like college dropout, but he's like all hardcore straight edge. Right. So like he's got <laughs> yeah. he's got X's drawn on his hand and he's listening. The music he's listening to, um, they pull like he's all it's not because the movie they call him like heavy metal or whatever. And he's right. like, it's, it's not it's heavy hardcore. metal. It's hardcore. And, and what's funny is the song that he was listening to in the movie uh, was a song called Straight and Alert from a straight edge hardcore band from the early nineties called uniform choice. And I'm like, what, what, what's really funny to me is when I hear where I live when in high school, there was a whole group of straight edge kids that were like my age, all the way up to seniors in high school. And they all used to like have uniform choice shir- shirts on and stuff like that. And they're like, we're going to beat that dude's ass if we see him smoking a cigarette. So it's like, it wasn't like too far off the truth, dude. Like, and this is what made me laugh about it. Cause I, I wanted to bring this up on the podcast because I'm like, dude, yeah, it, that's how those fucking straight edge dudes were. Some of them were even like straight edge skinheads, but like the skinheads in the South are different from like more in the mid, you know, the, the West in this area. Cause like they, they were just like working class skinhead kids that listened to hardcore. They weren't Nazis or anything like that. Right. So it was a little bit the, because uniform choice were straight edge skins, but they're vehemently. Yeah, I don't know if I ever heard them. They're vehemently against racism. There, there's a lot of skinhead bands that were really against racism. They're just like working class skinhead bands, but a lot right. of them are, um, and they're way anti racist. They were sharps, skinheads against racial prejudice. That's what they're called. But um, I've, it was a whole scene here in Albuquerque and, and all throughout the United States. But the stupid Nazis get all the fucking press, goddammit. But anyways, yeah. <laughs> but um, and it, not, just, not just go off the tirade, but Uniform Choice. I'm a little really good. Yeah, Uniform Choice. The, and, and, and on the cover of Uniform Choice, they got the X drawn on their hands like he has in the movie. It's right. just, that's, I just had to throw that out there, man. It was fucking hilarious. Yeah, his character is, is pretty good. He's always like the guy that's trying to talk him out. He's like, hey, I've been on the other side. I'm straight edge now. Yeah. So, like, he's trying to convince one of the guys. So, there's a scene where they find out the owner of the hotel was watching, uh, had a camera in the girl's restroom. Oh, the, and yeah, the movie theaters. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, oh, he's such a pervert. He's like, no, he's a good Christian man, blah, blah, blah. He brought me to the light. So, like, the straight edge kid is pitching, like, what makes him a good man is that he saved me. And so yeah. the kid, like, flips out and smashes all the peeing videos, I guess. I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, they, they do some pretty good character development in this movie. Yeah, sure. like, the, it's, the and that, the guy that was making the videos his death is awesome in the oh yeah when he meets the demon so he like <clears throat> basically he gets stuck in the bathroom with her and she manipulates him and then he kind of gets bent over the toilet and railed by the demon because <laughs> it's unlocking like your you know your curiosities and whatnot so it's like that was more like telling of his character you know that he wasn't necessarily the dude at this particular hotel wasn't necessarily a super christian guy yeah, the, the, he was not a. I mean, so the movie theater in the basement definitely had was some they had some stuff being stashed in the basement. You know, some some p- pornos and yeah. And, oh, and the movie posters down there were great. It was like the ten foot pole hole. Yeah, <laughs> it was like it had all these like I don't know if they're real or not, but like you know, it appeared like they were like making fun of like old titles of like 70s porn and 60s mm-hmm. porn <laughs> mm-hmm. and the titles are great so if you watch the movie i encourage you to check out the posters because there's a lot of really funny ones <laughs> yeah they and, and what's funny is they have like there's one two three four guys and one girl in the movie theater and they all do like the whole like we don't know if we should watch this this isn't right but they uh, then they all get mesmerized and sucked into it and then the stray edge guys like Get that off my reel! All pissed <laughs> off, and so basically they watch like uh, uh, um, it's not even a, it's like a it's like a, uh, a, a not a séance but like a summoning of of Lilith and yeah you know it's basically a ritual that they watch in the film and it and it and it unleashes Lilith 
who's fucking beautiful, by the way. All right, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and, then, you know, this, the whole movie is just them, you know, interacting with this demon and then finding, like, clever ways to trick them. Um, I will say one of the things I really loved about this was that the editing choices with the music, because the soundtrack is, like, kind of a 90s soundtrack, right? Mm-hmm. And but then like when things would get like disorienting and whatnot, they would like slow down the track to like fit the scene and what was going on. It was really cool, really clever. Um, that really stuck out to me for whatever reasons when I was watching when I was yeah. watching the movie. And it's just it's just filled with a lot of one liners as well, like these quick little hit jokes here and there that are just freaking <clears throat> it's just great and it's super nostalgic. Like you said, it makes me think of being in the theater and Back in the day, we used to, my friend used to be a projectionist, so I would go hang out up in the projection booth, and we would just, you know, we'd do shit like turn the sound off until somebody got up out of their chair to walk to tell us, then we'd turn it back on. <laughs> <laughs> so we'd fuck with people all the time. Is it bad to say that I still do shit like that? Like, I've been, I've been, you no, no, no. Well, I'm in a, a my job. I work in a like a. 500,000 square foot building that usually has 650 employees in it, but everybody's at home. So, but I still have to go work there because, you know, I do building maintenance yeah. facilities work and uh, they have, um, they have a, uh, intercom system there. And one of the security guards, he's, he's kind of a little bit of annoying. He likes to like talk to hear himself talk and you know, whatever. But anyways, uh, he'll be walking around the whole facility doing his little checks or whatever. And they'll get on the intercom and I'll go, Marcos, and then I'll just turn it off, and then I'll, I'll and he'll be like, "Did you guys hear that? Somebody call my name? Like, we'll just do stuff like that." <laughs> no, I didn't hear that, man. So, anyways, <laughs> yeah, the kids eventually figure out that they got to. Oh, uh, they find this book, and they find out that she's a succubus, and then they eventually read and find out how they can like trap her and get mm-hmm. her out of there. And they figure that out, and they have basically kind of a reenactment ritual where there's like a bunch of weird shit going on man like so one of their friends gets kidnapped earlier then he winds up like on a stage strapped with like one of the satanic symbols in his chest and the creepy old dude comes out who is that the same guy that's in the greasy strangler no strangler uh, no i thought it was for a minute too i was like i had to take a double take i'm like is it him it's not him is it him it's not him Mm -hmm. um yeah there's lots of dicks being ripped off and balls being exploded and can, can I, There's a can, bunch of men in bloody <laughs> diapers because they're basically their dicks got broke off. <laughs> yeah, can can I can I say that the ball scene because they do not. <laughs> there's a lot of dick in this movie. Like, oh yeah, um, yeah. Which you know, hey, it's the you know what you're getting with the title of this movie. I mean, like you just be okay with it. Yeah, there's <laughs> there is there is uh, quite a bit of dicks. Uh, and a prosthetic one as well. Very good makeup. Um, uh, a lot of full frontal breasts. Bush, because she's seventies. I think that that was a fake Bush though. That yeah, 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 that's what I thought. What is it? Uh, American? Is that what those are called? Yeah, it was like American. Yeah, it was. He, she had like a huge seventies Bush, but it wasn't <laughs> real, you know. Yeah, it looked but, exaggerated. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, Caitlin Pierce is the one who plays uh, Lilith in the movie, and she is absolutely stunning. Um, I don't know if you felt that way as well, but oh, yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, she was damn stunning. But um, yeah, the the scene, uh, I give it away. One of the guy's balls explodes, and uh, <laughs> he goes, uh, I, "I I I I I know first aid. I learned it in camp." Oh, yeah. And he goes, I don't want you touching me down there. And he's like, why? And he goes, because you're gay. Because it comes out that you know he's a Christian kid, yeah. but he, he had to go to a camp because he was gay. He goes, oh, bro, if he thinks that's what being gay is all about, I don't know what to tell you. Like, it's so funny. <laughs> and he's like, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> but they, like, they pull his pants down. He pulls his wiener up and his balls are just coming. His sack is completely torn open and his balls are just coming out. I'm like, dude, this is some great fucking gore. Like, really good. Oh, yeah. He, he ties a string around his balls and his dick and just, just tourniquet it. And that the rest of the movie's just hobbling around. I'm like, dude, <laughs> oh my God. Oh, so funny. So yeah, funny. It's hilarious. Yeah, um, <clears throat> that was a good one, man. And some great gore in this movie. Let's let's yeah. just 
Yeah, it's it's awesome. It's everything I hoped it would be. <laughs> Super fun. <clears throat> yeah, it was fantastic. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, <clears throat> but like I, you know, they, it just kind of wraps up with the kids trying to, uh, you know, they figure out how to catch them. Mm-hmm. Or catch her, or trap the demon, or whatever. Yeah, but yeah. This in is her a, pure, in her pure form. Yeah, in her pure form. Yes. Yes. Uh, like this is a total fun ride from beginning to end. Like it's. Um, I think the title choice is is actually fine. It doesn't really bother me because ultimately, once you get in there, you realize you're you're not really going to be offended. But you're going to be offended within the first minute or never at all. And, you know, much like we had talked about with Psycho Gorman, like, you know, if you're not in it at the beginning, it's just not going to be your movie. It's just that type of movie. I think porno is kind of the same way. Like, if you don't get in it, probably you probably get a little longer time in the porno because there's a lot at the after the first two scenes. It takes like 20 minutes for it to get going. So it's just a bunch of dialogue and whatnot. But, man, you couldn't ask for better effects and better, better jokes, better Mm-hmm. I, don't know, I think all the characters in the movie are, are pretty great, pretty well casted across the board. Yeah, it's I just a fun ride. It's so fucking weird. I didn't I didn't find any of them uh, hateable. Uh, no. You know, I didn't I didn't I didn't hate any of them at all. Uh, I thought that they're all really really well written and they are all likable to be honest with you and and you kind of felt for all of them in a weird way because they were all like these kind christian victims yeah. yeah they're like victims of christianity <laughs> <laughs> i mean honestly like yeah no, of, I, of their I, of their whole like you they, know <laughs> yeah I'll, 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 I'll go a little deep here but you know um I'll, I'll, I've, I've i've had some some counseling on on the unraveling of what christianity can do to you especially like being raised a catholic and you know they're they're you know my my therapist is like well you know it's your body you're allowed to have a relationship with your own body as long as it doesn't get dysfunctional you know what i mean it's like okay yeah i i, I understand you know what i mean like <laughs> it's like you know like that, that's really it you know in a nutshell like don't <laughs> let it get crazy and then so these people like in this movie poor things are like if we look at a titty we're right. going you're going to hell and it's like what <laughs> you know? we better pray I do yeah. love when the one guy loses his uh, faith. He's like, I don't believe in anything anymore. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> they asked him to pray, and he was like, because the one kid's like, the only way out of this is to pray our way out of it. <laughs> and he's like, I don't believe in anything anymore. <laughs> well, somebody, so one of the writers, because it was written by Matt Black and uh, Lawrence Van, uh, Van, Vanicelli, and so one of the writers had to have known kind of like how straight edge society works or straight edge kids or right edge somebody kids. in the loop because there because there is a straight edge song that says don't drink don't smoke don't do drugs right and so like the the straight edge kid in the movie or the projectionist is like he's like i gave up smoking you know and that's why he like threw out the cigarette at the beginning of the movie kicked their coke because you can't drink yeah it's just you can't drink um you know caffeine if you're straight edge i mean you're completely straight edge right and in the movie he's like you're not gonna tempt me you know, because like that Lilith is coming, and then she's like, and then she she busts, she's holding two cigarettes in her hands and flashes her <laughs> breast. He's all, "You temptress, you temptress!" <laughs> like, Still fighting him. so hard. Yeah, she got him. She's like cigarettes and titties. Yeah, you got, she got you. I'm done. No, oh, and then his balls <laughs> explode. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, so really cool, man. I I really like the fact that. It, it was just a fun movie, man. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. It like, just checked all the boxes for me, pretty much me across too. the board. It was every, everything I thought it was going to be. Is it the best movie in the world? No. However, I am actually going to give this a five out of five because I think it's that for me. It checks all the boxes. I think the title is great, even though it probably turns some people off. But it, it the whole concept is the kids finding a porno in a Christian town with a theater, and they decide to pop it in and of course their worst nightmares come through right they're, they they <laughs> sinned and did this and now they're paying the price for it right they're so deep. i just think it's just it's just so damn fun and you know i i absolutely loved it I, if yeah. this was i hadn't seen this last year and i already made my uh, 20 the 20 best of 2020 list and this most definitely would have made the top 10 hands down it mm-hmm. probably would have made the top 
three, honestly. Uh, it was just a damn fun movie. So I Very just can't fun. encourage you people enough to check it out. If you have it, don't let the title yeah. push you away from it. It's fun. Very fun film. I will concur. Five out of five. Uh, hilarious. Um, obscene. But not for the sake of being obscene. Right. It, it's never it, it's never over the top. Like, that was my right. biggest concern was like, okay, this movie's called Porno. Is it just really just going to be like a bunch of people fucking and dying by some demon? But it really, it's not, that's not the movie. It's, no, it, it, it basically <laughs> takes everyone's worst fear or their worst, like, kink and, and turns it back on them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That, that's, that's kind of what it is. Um. And, you know, even down to the girl, but it, it it's just, it's fun. It's just a damn fun movie, man. And, and talk about a great one to watch with, like, a room of people, of unsuspecting friends. Mm-hmm. Man, this one's a home run. <laughs> yeah, I want my... I, I, I mean, tried, it, 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 depending on the crowd, obviously, but, man, it could be, a, it, it's a home run. <laughs> my wife fell asleep to this one, but she wasn't feeling well. But I, 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 I need her to watch this. Um, yeah. It's, and it's I feel re- like it, it's pretty, I really liked it as soon as... Because, you know, there's an expectation by calling it porno that, like, okay, where's the, where's the scene? And they give, it, they give you one right at the beginning. So your expectations immediately made, like, okay, here we are. We're in it. Let's go. Like, where's this, go, where's this road taking us? So I think it was pretty smart to put that scene, even though it's just kind of silly. But I think yeah. it was actually smart for – I think it was actually a smart suit. So. Yeah, fun stuff, man. Great pick, Mr. Xander Kane. Great yes. pick. Yeah. Uh, so we kept it topical. Uh, yeah. We both picked newer movies within and the we, last year or two. Yeah, we may be back to our normally scheduled garbage next time. <laughs> yeah, this is kind of high. Brow. I don't know. Like, this is kind of high brow for us. <laughs> watching watching porno made me. Um, there's a film by Scott Schumer, uh, which is the guy that did Found, which I know you're a fan of Found. Love found, yeah. Um, he's got one called Harvest Lake. That's kind of this weird psychosexual movie. Um, that I may, I don't know. We may do it next week. I don't know. I guess I'll keep picking these obscene movies. Yeah, well, <laughs> this is your second one. Heavily, heavily uh, drenched in sex. <laughs> yeah, we'll put it out. So there. I was like, hey, we may as well do a third one. <laughs> You know, three for three might as well yeah, that's right maybe. we'll see though we'll see we'll see what you happens know. between now and then apparently yeah. i gotta get a new microphone so yeah you do sir you need to get a new, <laughs> just go get a new one just they're yeah probably, probably i don't know if you use a bluetooth or a a headset just you know but yeah. uh yeah it's a little scratchy it's all good <laughs> apologies if you guys hear that uh this is my uh, fault we'll fix this all post editing sir yeah no fix it in post no problemo all right guys uh you know where to find us look for us for at uh cemetery gate 66 on the twitter uh and come like our facebook page cemetery gates um we don't do a lot of action in there we just kind of post in there when we have a new podcast yeah yeah whatever randomly i mean if obviously if people wanted to chat more we'd probably be in there but that's cool yeah you don't have to yeah no problem we get I've, I've, i've had a few people hit me up and be like can we be can i be on your show can it be on your show? I'm like, uh, you know, uh, uh, look here. The, look. the door, the door in is very sacred. We only let the Canadian firecracker in and yes. Mona. That's yes. it. And, and, and she is going to be getting a new, she's going to be much like you. She's using a headset. Um, but I've, I've sent her some links and she's going to be getting a, a new setup. She's going to be getting a, a proper, microphone and and a no proper worries. headset yeah so hopefully no we'll, we'll help we'll allow her back on and we'll look around but uh yeah man so uh we'll see you guys on the flip appreciate yeah. you guys listening and uh, go watch porno the movie it's a, it's a great double feature is it not it is it's such a, a good double feature the only thing that would be you could argue would be better like doing turbo kid and psycho Goreman would be a pretty damn good mm. dose but they're too similar i, I think you you know what you 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 were pretty pretty up there. I was thinking like a good double feature for me is like Hobo with the Shotgun. Mandy is a good double feature, yeah. uh, or even Turbo Kid and and Mandy. Any of those, all that Canadian shit, it's so fucking good, dude. Like I love the shit that comes out of Cana- yeah. Cana- Canada. Canada. There you go. Our love to the Canadian firecracker. All right, guys, we'll see you on the flip. Uh, thanks for listening. 
and uh, we'll we'll be back with uh, something obscure and stupid.